people to be prayed for. Does that make sense? We want you to be prayed for by Pastor Norm. We're not looking to a person, we're looking to Jesus, but Jesus flows through people. We're blessed to have him here today. So I want to say, guys, come on, let's believe for miracles in the house today. Amen? So guys, with that, uh, for those who don't know, Pastor Norm and Jess are our senior pastors for 10 years. And uh, I mean, they had to be good to, 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 to put, you know, to help Debbie and I, because especially Debbie, she had a lot of problems, that woman of mine, I, seriously, man, God knows who to give you to sort of, to, you know, to, to build your character, oh, well. but, you know, but it's, it's an honor to be here, and, and I want to say this, that what, what, for past the Normans, yes, what we learned, we learned the majority of stuff through these guys, through relationship. We had a brilliant relationship. You know, they loved on us. They cared for us. You know, when we were crying, they were there to help us and stuff. And honestly, we used to go and, bro, we used to go to Waikato from Gizzy. We'd be, you'd get calls to go and pray for people who were in car accidents and stuff. And man, I would ask lots of questions. And Normie would share, like, how God came into this life and how he's been through. But we've seen it. We've seen the power of God flowing through this couple. We've seen the great, you know, we've seen how much they love God. Amen. So it's a real honor to have him here. And I've just got one little photograph. I don't really remember this here, but we done this thing one time in Gizzy. We've done a message on this brave heart to think of this. Here we go. Look at that, eh? Hey, remember that, Norm, remember that? Yeah, freedom, remember that? Because we Pastor Norm preached a message on freedom. And uh, it was awesome. It was, gosh, the house, bro, there would have been six, 700 people there that day. The place was packed. People got saved. People got healed. People got set free. So, you know, I don't know how I came across this photo. I must have obviously had it, you know. But uh, see, guys, my puku wasn't as big and stuff then, you know. It was sort of, you know. So, hey, with that, I just want to welcome Pastor Norm up. And it's an honor to have you here, Norm. So, come on, let's, let's give him a, a big welcome. Tarong a welcome. Amen. Come on, yes. My Hari Maeti Wairua Tapu. Ah, kia ora koutou, kia ora whanau, kia ora koutou, kia ora koutou katoa. Ah. Nga mihi o te whare o te atua o tukanga nui e kiwa. Kia koutou. Ah, mā te kingi, i hukaraiti, e kaha, uh, e me te kihi, uh, ta kaha, ki te uh, ihi. Wairua tapu. <laughs> May he give you the strength and the, and the power of the King, the Lord Jesus Christ in your life. Nareira, kia ora koutou, kia ora koutou, kia ora koutou katoa, kia ora whanau from Gizzi. Uh, this is my beautiful uh, wife, hairdresser, uh, cook, um, and all the rest of it. Uh, prophetess and so forth. And so we just want to bring greetings from Gizzi, but first uh, I just want to just share a couple of words. Aww. Thanks, babe. Kia ora everybody. It's so very, very special to be in this house this morning. Uh, as you know, Trev and Deb were with us for their first years when they came to Christ and became associate pastors with us in Gisborne and they were very loved over there and they were just totally immersed in the whanau and um, what blesses our hearts today is to see where they are now and just to see the that they have been successful in their walk in God and just in serving Christ. And, you know, look at you. Yeah. This is the reward. Um, just having you in their lives and being able to encourage you, uplift you, and be a part of their whanau, it's just amazing to see you be successful, to reach your full potential, and to be all you can be in Christ. Yeah. How amazing is that? So it really blesses me. I know it blesses Norm to see where you both are today yeah. and your beautiful boys, yeah. to see Brody up here. This, I mean, he's such a cutie. He's still a cutie. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, you might know things I don't know, but you know, that's okay. <laughs> but yes, yeah, so thank you for having us here today. I, I absolutely know that God's got something special for all of you. All you have to do is receive. So bless awesome. you. Thanks, babe. Awesome. Yeah, yeah don't talk all those, those uh, that corridor, Trev and Deb. They're, they're our spiritual son and daughter, and um, a couple of them, and uh, the first ones 
that uh, were raised up and sent out of our house to plant a church in this, well, not to plant, to pastor a church in this nation. So these guys, and they're, they're not settlers, they're pioneers. You know, if you want to come sit under a ministry, it's nice and calm, and you're in the wrong place. You know, they're not settlers, they're pioneers. I've always got to be, you settle for a while to get established, then up you go, and you got to pioneer and break through, break through. That's why Jesus came. He didn't come to settle. He came to break through in our lives. And he had come to break through in the lives that don't know him yet. So it's settling but pioneering, breaking through. So they've got this breakthrough anointing ministry on them. And uh, we just had lots of laughs and just lots of awesome times in God. Anyway, I've got, I've got a mahi to do, so I'm going to get straight into it. Uh, is it. Steve, are you here? Steve, where are you, mate? Just put your hand up. Steve. Steve. Okay, Tony. Tony, Tony, here you go, mate. Um, where's Steve? <laughs> where's Steve? Is Steve usually here? Is there a Steve here? <laughs> oh well, because uh, the the same word was for Steve and Tony. But anyway, hey Tony, I um, um, I, I don't know you, but I know you. <laughs> The Holy Spirit came to me this morning and was just talking to me about uh, you. And he, um, so what I saw is I saw you there and I saw the Holy Spirit standing next to you. And I saw like, uh, uh, they look like blocks or buildings, big one and a smaller one. And I have no idea what they mean, mate, but all I know is the Holy Spirit said, it's going to be okay. Don't worry. There's uh, a couple of decisions in front of you. Don't worry. I'm with you. I'm with you. It's going to work out fine. Whatever that means. <laughs> um, could, uh, could you... Uh, would you like to partner with me for a miracle? There's a, a, a lady dying of cancer somewhere in the nation. I've been asked to pray for her. Usually in our church, we'd pray over the prayer cloth and send it to her, but I'm not there this morning, but we're here. It's Jesus that heals. I'm the hose. He's the water that flows through the hose. The, wa- the hose can't make a plant grow, but the water through the hose gives life to the plant. And that's all we are. We're just a hose. We're just the vessel. We have this tonga, this treasure within the earthen vessel, but it takes faith to, to release that. And so the, the water is the Holy Spirit, to Wairua Tapu, through Jesus. And when we pray in his name, he releases his power. So we just, just stretch out your hand to uh, this person. Lord, we just uh, thank you, Jesus. We can only bind what you've already bound in heaven. And you've already bound cancer and death and hell. You've got the keys. <clears throat> so we declare on earth, as it is in heaven, this disease over you, darling, is bound. It's broken now. Its power's broken. The words of the doctor are broken. They're bound also. And they fall to the dust powerless. No tongue raised up against you. Now we loose, Lord, only what you have released already in heaven. You have released uh, divine life, not just healing, but health. And so we release to you new health as the Spirit of God comes upon you. There's the wind of the Holy Spirit. It's either the, the air conditioning or the wind of the Holy Spirit. I don't know. <laughs> the wind of the Holy Spirit come upon you, dissolve you, and free you back to your family. In Jesus' name, amen. Thanks, Father. I'll be sending this off. And be, praise God, another miracle to his glory. Um, Steve Tony got those notices out of the way. I'm going to get straight into this uh, kōrero. And then, uh, so the first half, I'm going to kōrero. Second half, I'm going to start ministering the presence of God here. Um, He said, um, I mean, there's wells already open here. I just get this boom, boom, boom when I'm looking at you. You know what's hitting me? Greatness. Pull. History makers. Nation shakers. uh, City changers. Right here. Just the greatness of Christ in you. Boom, boom. You may not even believe you're carrying it, but it's hitting me. And just a room full of an amazing potential. You're just incredible. I mean, God foreordained. He knew you before you were born in that amazing. Before you popped out of your mother's uh, womb, he said, I knew you. I set you apart. You didn't choose me. I chose you. And he said uh, that before the foundation of the world, he chose us in him. Before the world was even formed, before the human beings. He said, I chose you, Ephesians 1.4. He chose us before the foundation of the world, before the whenua. There's no no tangata, just whenua. He chose us that we would be holy. Who's holy? (laughs) We'll be holy and blameless before him, before him in aroha, before him in love. So we come into his presence, not with guilt, not with shame, Sure, we all got a past. We are all born with a disease called sin. But he who knew no sin became sin for us. And we don't have to fight for salvation. We must just receive. We don't have to fight to be forgiven. We don't have to fight to get the guilt taken off, the shame. Just receive. 
Same for healing. We don't have to fight for healing. It's not a battle to get your healing. It's just receive. He already healed. 2,000 years ago, every disease has been conquered. He already saved, forgave every sin 2,000 years ago. You know, when he cancels sin, when you cancel a debt, the prison sentence is terminated. It's terminated. It's terminated. It's, it's the truth. It's a principle in, history, uh, uh, in society. It's a principle. Uh, anyway. So anyway, believe God, but believe in yourself too, please. Don't get over spiritual. And over. Yes, it's all him. We're the, we're the branches. He's the vine. But come on, be proud of who you are in Christ Jesus. Be bold in who you are. And accept who you are because he loves you. He died on the cross for you and me. That we'll be holy and blameless before him. So I, the joy of the Lord just fills me all the time because I just know I'm, I'm his favorite. <laughs> you fight over it yourself, but I'm his favorite. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he might have told you that too. Did he tell you that? Well, that was, that's, it's the truth. It's the truth. You are his favorite. It's all relative. Amen. I want to go beyond just being loved. I want to be pleasing. I want to be a son that pleases him. And Jesus said, I always do the things that please him. And he loves everybody. He even loves you know, the ones up. You know, he loved me when I was giving him the finger. He loved me when I was up to my neck in sin. But he wasn't pleased with me. So I want to go beyond just being loved. I want to be pleasing, live a life that pleases. How do you please him? Without faith, it's impossible to please him. It's just believing. Just believing what he says. That pleases him. It pleases him. Hallelujah. Anyway, he's here this morning, and he said one of the things he wants to do is, well, one of the gifts that Jess Mir brought a gift to this, this fuddy. This is our, uh, one of our son and daughter, spiritually. And uh, we come bringing gifts from the east. Not wise man, wise woman from the east, come very good. And uh, spiritual gifts. And it's from Te Wairua Tapu, it's from, it's from Ihu. He sent us. So he sent us with gifts. You know, wherever we go, we always take gifts. We do that as Maori culture, we always take a, a koha or, or, or a tonga or something, but same in the spirit. And so he sent us with a gift. And I said, What's the gift? He says, um, There's already wells open here, but he says, We're going to open a new well. We're going to open, open a new well this morning. And so on that message, I'm speaking about unblocking your well. So it's going to be a short message. And so in the Old Testament, so what is the well? Uh, John uh, 7, 38, Jesus said, out of your belly will flow rivers of living water. Okay? So the river is the Holy Spirit. It's Christ flowing out of you. And uh, what is the, um, the well is your heart. Proverbs 4, 23, you know, guard your heart with all diligence because out of it flows issues of life. So your heart is like the, your well. <clears throat> And the river that flows out, the river is the Holy Spirit. Uh, he doesn't want bitter and sweet. He wants So the well, <clears throat> in the Old Testament, the Philistines, what they would do is that they would block the well up. In Old Testament times, if you're living in the desert, you needed a well to live. If you didn't have a well with water, you couldn't feed uh, your flocks, you couldn't, uh, you couldn't survive. And the Philistines, in order to get God's people off the land, the Fenua, that God had told them, that's your land, that's your Fenua, so the Philistines, which is the devil, he would do things. He'd block the wells up. He'd block the well up with dirt. They would block yeah. with, use dirt. Or they'd block the well up with rocks. Or they'd block the well up with a dead body. Why? Because you couldn't drink the water and it would make God's people had to move off. Today in the spirit, the devil wants to block your well. He wants to block your heart up with dirt or with rocks or with dead bodies. And if you've got a well blocked up, the rivers can't flow. And so I'm going to very quickly just give you a quick quarter about the wells. And so the first thing talks about the dirt. You know, in Genesis, it talks about how God created us out of the earth. So the dirt is symbolic of the flesh nature, the, the nature we were born with, the nature of sin. And it talks about flesh, flesh and out. I got born again, me and Jess got born again in 1979. <clears throat> really met Jesus. Got filled with the Holy Ghost uh, a few months later. And I stopped swearing instantly. I stopped cursing and just amazing. It was just phenomenal. But I didn't stop thinking naughty thoughts. <laughs> and I didn't stop gluck, 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 gluck. be drunk in the spirit, but I wasn't. I was drunk in something else. But I loved Jesus and he accepted me regardless of my faults. He's, and I knew I was forgiven. I knew I was loved. I didn't have guilt or shame. But every now and again, I'd just stuff up. 
And I had, there was a dirt, it was the flesh. And um, I was going to a Prezi church at the time. I got made a deacon and an elder within four years. I'm pretty hard up, eh? <laughs> but they didn't realize some Sundays I'm coming to church, sitting there in the pew with the dry horrors from the night before because I've been on the plonk the night before and I've got communion in my hand. And I'm sitting there feeling, oh, I feel so... Although I knew he loved me, I thought, this isn't right. I wish the cracks would open up and swallow me because my well had dirt in it. And I just said this, oh, God, help me. And I would ask God, I'm not worthy to take communion. He says, yes, you are. I said, but look what I did last night. I got drunk. And I'm an elder in the church. He says, yeah, 1 John 1, 9, confess your sin to me. I'm just to forgive and cleanse you of all unrighteousness. Romans 8, 28, and this will work for good. I said, really? Just like that? He says, really? So I said, God, forgive me for getting drunk last night. I'm sorry, I repent, I'll never do that again. He says, you're forgiven, take your communion. Just like that, just like that. Boom, boom. See, the devil wants to hold you in the past, but Jesus is walking, he says, follow me, follow me, follow me. You don't keep looking back. And so, you know, I never did that again until next month. <laughs> and I never did it again until another month. It was dirt in my well until I learned as I drew nearer to Jesus, he helped me get rid of the dirt in the well. So if there's dirt in your well, don't condemn yourself. Just keep bringing it before God. Help. And, you know, I, I tried to repent. You know, I didn't, obviously, for a few months. But I learned how to turn my back on that and turn my face to Jesus. So if there's dirt in your well, don't condemn yourself. God wants to get that dirt out. He, he loves you. His blood will cleanse you. Keep moving forward. Don't, don't, don't despair over your weakness. And your weakness is strength is made perfect. Number two, the, the enemy put rocks in the well. Rocks would block up the water. They couldn't get the water. And rocks speak of in the New Testament, the stumbling blocks. Jesus is the rock of offense to, those, to the Jews. And a rock is unforgiveness. People who hurt you. People who betray you. People who have done nasty stuff to you. And you hold that resentment. You hold that anger. You hold that and it turns to unforgiveness. And unforgiveness turns to bitterness. And bitterness begins to poison your well. You get bitter water. You all hey, amen on Sunday, I love you, Jesus. But on Monday, <laughs> you know, you can't have bitter and sweet water out of the same well. But if there's unforgiveness there, that's what you're going to have. You've got to unblock the well. You've got to get the dirt out. You've got to get the rocks out too. I had lots of rocks in my well. One well in particular was a woman who betrayed me before I met Jess. We're going to get married. She betrayed me and, and slept around with another guy. And, uh, and, and it killed me. And, and I, I never got over it. And... Uh, I became suicidal, I became murderous. I was going to murder some people, kill some people. Then I was going to take my life, suicidal. I went through a time of manic depression for 13 years. And you can look all wonderful on the outside and happy as. But when I heard a song, it would trigger off a memory of what this person did. When you have a good thought, <clears throat> you'll feel good. If I had a blackboard and put my nails down it, <coughs> some of you get because it affects your emotions. And thoughts of people who betrayed hurt you. If they're not dealt with, they'll still affect you with depression and sorrow and grief and guilt and shame. And so the Lord said to get your dirt, get your rocks out of the well. How to get the rocks out? I had to forgive her. I had to forgive her. I said, why should I forgive her? She should crawl across broken glass and beg my forgiveness. I didn't hurt her. She hurt me. He says, it's not what's, who's right is what's right, son. I forgave you. I crawled across broken glass in a, in a figuratively speaking to forgive you. How could you not forgive her over 20 bucks when I forgave her of a million bucks worth of sin? I said, you got me. So he, he graced me, showed me how to forgive. And when I forgave her, that dirty big rock got taken out of my well and I got set free from manic depression within 20 minutes, 13 years gone, about 20 minutes. I blocked the well. And I'm speaking to people here. They may have betrayed you. They may have hurt you. We have talked with people who have been in, uh, incest victims. Terrible crimes. Terrible stuff. It's not mimonizing it. How can you forgive them? It doesn't mean you have to accept what they did. <clears throat> but if you don't let them go and forgive them, their bitterness is going to poison you. And God gives you the power. Jesus, when he rose from the dead, he came to the disciples at Galilee and went, receive you the Holy Spirit. It wasn't the baptism that came at Pentecost. Why did he, why did he do that? 
He was empowering them to do something. The very next words, whoever sins you forgive will be forgiven. Whoever sins you retain will be retained. He was giving them power to forgive sin. And forgiveness is not a natural thing. It takes a supernatural act of God, the power of God. And he gave us a supernatural power. He gave me a supernatural power to forgive somebody I thought I'd forgiven. I've been free since 85 <laughs> The third thing is the, dev the, the, the devil wants to put dead bodies in your well. Dead bodies are, what's the, Hebrews 6 talks about the, the foundations. Huh? Repentance from dead works, faith towards God, doctrine of baptisms, laying out of hands, uh, eternal judgments and resurrection from the dead. So they're just the six basic steps that we're walking. The first step is repentance from dead works. So dead works... Rocks in the well speak of dead works, speaks of things that once upon a time worked for us, especially as Christians and ministry, that, but that are dead now. It, it's finished. It's over. And God's doing a new thing. Don't try to hang on to something that was once fruitful and successful. And he comes to prune. And he comes to prune that branch that once was really fruitful, but now you're trying to keep it growing, but it's sort of uh, getting sort of uh, withering up. And no, oh, I'm trying to predict this. This is how God once moved and always moved. And then Jesus comes along and scuffs the thing off. What are you doing? He says, I want to make you more fruitful. But you've got to let go of the dead works. Let go of those things that once worked, but they're not working anymore. I'm, I'm going through this. Snip, 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 snip. Or dead works could be toxic relationships you've had with other people. Or toxic relationships you've got with other people. Jesus came to the well. There's a woman sitting there, thirsty. <laughs> she's at a well. Actually, Jesus is the well, but she's sitting at the well. And, you know, the, you know the story in John 4. And um, she's looking for purpose in life through relationships with men, with other people. So many of God's people looking for what only Jesus can. You can only get out of a relationship with God what no relationship with any human being can give you. And so many Christians, even, they want relationship with somebody to make them feel loved. That's wonderful. We all do. Aurahau ki te tangata. That's part of love one another. But the first one is aurahau ki te atua. It's love God with all your heart, soul, mind, strength. First, Aroha ki te atua, then aroha ki te tangata. The greatest commandment is to love the Lord. Second is love your neighbor. And so this woman, she's trying to find God. She's hungry. She's trying to find through a relationship with men what can only come through a relationship with God. She doesn't know who he is. He's sitting next to her. Long story short, she recognizes who he is. Jesus unblocks her well. She, and, um, and, and he said, um, you know, Go and call your husband. She said, I don't have a husband. She said, no, you got, you got, you've had five. And the guy you're with, you're just, you're just shacked up with him at the moment. Whoa. <laughs> Not to condemn her. He didn't go to seek her out to condemn her, to judge her. He just said, he's saying that they're toxic relationships. And they polluted you well, honey. But I'm the one you're looking for. I'm the one that'll unblock that rock. It's a relationship with me. It's going to heal you of the toxic relationships of what you've had with people. They can't help you. I'm the one. And she received him into her heart and she went into the city. And next minute, you know, when your well gets unblocked, it flows everywhere. It, it leaks over people. Next minute, she tells all the men, come see a man that told me my life. And they, she starts a revival in Samaria. One woman's well unblocks and it flows and floods the whole town. They all come to Jesus over two days. Jesus is there, two or three days. And they said, now we believe you are the Son of God, not because of her testimony, because we found out we're tasted for ourselves. Unblock your well. So if there's a toxic relationship you haven't got over, or you're in a toxic relationship with somebody, and I know it can be difficult if you're married to it and so forth, you, you, you need to first aroha ki put God first, and stop relying on, uh, on the sense of significance and acceptance from hitangata, man. You can't get it. You won't get it. Look for God first. Number two, if you can get out of that relationship, get out of it. If it's abusive, if it's dangerous to you, the children, get out of it. God, what God brought together? Mm -hmm. Yeah, but he says that we would live in peace. If there's no peace and there's danger, get out of it. Understand the word of God. Look at the uh, book of Corinthians. God hasn't called us to war, but to peace. And anyway, so there you go. Get your, so how do you get the, 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 the dead bodies out of your well? <laughs> Disconnect. <laughs> Disconnect by connecting. 
to, to uh, Eucharist, connect to Jesus. By that, connecting him, he will help you. And then he'll begin to flow through you. So I'm blocking the well. So if you've got dirt in your well, if you've got um, uh, rocks in your well, people you need to forgive. If you've got a dead body in your well, I'm going to embarrass you, get you to stand down. <laughs> I joke. We chill, you know. We chill in Gizzi. We chill. I'm from Omaru, North Otago, me and Jess. We're very conservative down there. Oh, yes. When we have a meeting and there's a move of God, we will even raise one hand. If it's a rip, we'll be toe to hands. And we are full of the joy of the Lord. You might not show on our faces, but we are. <laughs> you guys aren't like that. You are different. But, you know, it's about letting your spirit express. You know, let your being, let your being, let your soul, let your, your waha, let your kaha, let your, your, your aroha, let it express what you're feeling on the inside. And you've got a pastor's like this. Uh, but Trevi hasn't changed one, but he's like that and gives in your face, bro, bro, bro. <laughs> you should have seen when we go in the power of God meetings. He says, I oh, the biggest source of seeing demons come out. Bro, bro. <laughs> you got a tonga here. You got a tonga. Rangatera. And I know you look after him, you honor him, so I'll honor you guys for that. Look after our kids, because we'll be back over here to check you out, you know. <laughs> well, Mama, then, no, no. You're like our mukapuna. You're like our spiritual mukapuna. Okay, so if you've got dirt, rocks, or dead bodies, you can do a karakia right now. Okay, so uh, for the sake of, of it, I'm just going to ask everybody to stand right now. Can I lead you to assist you in the karakia? I've acknowledged you to God, the dirt, the rocks, the bodies. And it's your hikoi, it's your journey. I can't get rid of them for you. It's up to you to forgive, not me. It's up to you to, to, to turn away from the dirt. It's up to you to take those rocks out. It's up to you to disconnect from a toxic relationship. It's up to you. I can't do that. But he listens to us and he's here. He's here. I tell you, he's here. Could we just pray? <clears throat> just let's say together to Jesus. Jesus. You are the living water. You are the well. I drink from you, sweet waters. And you refresh my soul every day. Thank you, Lord. Your steadfast love never ceases. And your mercies are new right now, this morning. And so I come to you seeking mercy, not judgment, but mercy. Like the woman at the well, please help me disconnect from toxic relationships with people or things. Anything's polluting me, polluting your power through me. Help me disconnect as I make the step of faith. In Jesus' name. Forgive me, Lord, for any unforgiveness, any rocks in my well that I'm holding against anybody. By your grace, I forgive those who betrayed, those who hurt, those who maligned my life and those I love. I choose to forgive you in Jesus' name. You're not part of my life anymore. Thank you, Jesus. As I forgive others, you forgive me now. I'm free. Finally, Lord, I am but dust. And in this dust is a tonga, a treasure. And I honor the treasure more than the carrier of dust. So I repent and I turn away from the dirt, from that dirt nature, that flesh nature. And I thank you. I don't have to fight against it. I'm already dead to it. I'm dead to sin and I'm alive to God. I'm crucified with Christ. Nevertheless, I live. 
Yet not I, but Christ in me. So I repent. No more dirt. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. Amen, amen. amen. You may be seated, Father. Wow. Yeah, there were a few. Uh, some of you will feel like you, you've lost a bit of weight when you leave here this morning. And you'll go out feeling like weight's been lifted from you. It has. Now, I want to go into a, a time of ministry, and uh, then we're going to release people who need to go for children and so forth. Um, but they will also call forth people. Where Jess and I are going to lay hands on you, and you're going to get healed. Now, not because I say you're going to get healed. It's the one who says you'll get healed. He said, Jesus said, you lay hands on the sick, something's going to happen. You'll, you'll recover. Now, I need to instruct you how you, how you receive. It's, for years, I used to try and get healing and try to get people healed. And, and it's not, I don't have to do that. I don't have to heal people. Jesus has already, did, had, has Jesus already forgiven all our sins? That's right. He ain't going to go on the cross and die all over again every time a sinner comes to. He's, not going to, he's already forgiven all sin and he's healed all disease. It's already a completed work. Uh, Psalm 103, uh, verse 3, who is, forgives all our iniquity, number one, and heals all our disease, number two. So in the healing, the, in the, in the, in the um, cancellation of the debt of sin is the termination of the sentence of sickness. And so it's not a matter of just pray for the healing, it's fight. For, you don't have to. When, when I lead somebody to Jesus, I don't just try to fight for them to get saved. Fight for their salvation. Fight them for them to be forgiven. I just got to get them to receive their forgiveness from Jesus. Just receive it. You don't have to fight for it. He's offering it. And the same for healing. I'm not going to get try to help you fight for your healing, or strive for your healing, or beg God for your healing. It's a matter of just receive. It's easy. It's simple. Although in the West it's not, because we complicate things. In my clinics over in the third world, I have bunches of Muslims and communists and Hindus. <clears throat> and I say what I'm saying to you. I say, we're going to do a prayer. So turn away from your gods and accept Jesus. <laughs> and just say, Jesus, forgive me of all my sins. Take it away now. Take away all my curses and all my diseases right now. Because I bless you and forget not all your benefits. You've forgiven all my iniquity and healed all my diseases. Now, they never prayed a prayer like that in their life. They're not Christians. They don't know the Bible. And they say, Amen. Then I say to them, now do with your body what you couldn't do before. And deaf and, dumb, deaf and dumb children start speaking. Cripples start walking. Blind eyes open. Deaf ears pop open. Hin Ex-Hindus, Muslims, communists, never been to a church before. That's my healing clinics. And they're just believing the simple truth of what Jesus said. They're not trying to figure it out, nut it out, study it ten times. It's just like that. I just, all my job is to help them to receive. Not to get healed, but just to receive. He's already done it. And we've seen so many more miracles since then. So here's how you receive. Mark 11, 24. Jesus said, whatever things you're asking for in prayer, when you pray, when? When you pray, when we lay hands on you, or whenever, when we pray, believe you have received. Believe then, and you shall have them. So you've got to time stamp this. I've prayed and Waited for it to happen. And when's it going to come? Pray again. And, well, it's not happening. Pray again. Oh, I think I see something happening. I think I feel. Oh, oh it's, it's happening. No, he says, when you pray, you believe. Don't believe after you've prayed. When you pray, believe you have received. And you shall have it. This is revolutionary to so many Christians. Even to me. It's just a whole a new key off I've discovered. When you pray. When we lay hands on you. That's when you have in your mind, I receive it, I've got it. Whatever it is you need, I've got it. That's it. You time stamp it, today is the day I received it. And Jesus, not me, Jesus said, and you, you, will, you will have these things. You will have it. I've experienced it time and time. Jess and I have experienced it in our lives time and time again. <sighs> it's awesome. Okay. All right. Ooh. Time's clicking. Time's ticking. So I'm going to do a couple of things to open up and release his presence. So I'm going to blow with this kawowo, which is a Maori flute. Uh, it's just the whole, the Holy Spirit just loves the sound of it. He just loves it. He flows through it when I blow through it, and he heals people through it. He just loves, he just loves it. It's not because I'm a special player. I'm not on the cramp. <laughs> but he's everything. <laughs> 
it's something he uses. I used to take it around the world and he touches people and they get healed and yokes fall off and cancers dissolve and bodies just, arthritis get healed just sitting there. No one touching them, just to wairua tapu. Because I'm focusing your, 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 you to Jesus. I'm focusing you to Jesus, the healer. And then we're going to sing a song, and Sue's going to help me. We're going to sing a couple times in Māori, and then in English, which is Holy Spirit, you are welcome here. And then I'm going to lead us in a couple of old school songs. You are the God that heals me. You are the Lord, my healer. You took my sin and healed my disease. You are the Lord, my healer. But speaking, we're singing truth. Declaring truth that the Holy Spirit can work on. He, he only confirms truth. So we're going to sing and worship Jesus. And uh, probably another old one. I think it's uh, here in your presence, here in your presence. Chains are broken, captives are set free. Focusing on Jesus. And then the miracles start. Well, they'll, they'll, the f- miracle, uh, healing's already started. People with back pain, you'll feel down the back of your neck, your spine. Just click. Click, click. Often people hear the bones start clicking together, arthritic, and because it's already been, you've already been healed. Truth sets free. And when you realize, hey, I am healed, boom, your body just responds to truth. There are angels in the house right now ministering in their way. But anyway, we're going to do this. So, Sue, are you up here? Where are you, darling? Thank you. We all good, Fano? Kapai? Let's allow to wait a tapu out. Let's loose him. Let's allow him to do what he wants to do. He so loves you. Stop trying to get healed. Just be like a sail. Just catch the wind. Just catch it. Just catch it. Just chill. Don't try and, ah. Uh, don't look like being sucking lemons. Just, just, ah, oh, Jesus. When, so when I pray up here too, when I pray, musos, you don't have to come up. I want you to sit down because often the musos miss out and God says, no, I want the musos to catch this. Kapai, kia ora. Thank you. I want you, you fellas, are giving so much. You're so amazing. You pour, 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 but he wants to pour into you. Uh, so, so there'll come a time when I'm going to start rebuking sicknesses and diseases. That's when I pray. And if, that's you, and if you don't hear the sickness or the affliction that you're suffering, if you don't hear me call out, don't care. Just when I'm praying, you said, that's for me. When, he pray, when you pray, I receive it. That's for me. Now, it's not just physical healings. It's, it's financial breakthrough. It's relational healings. It's heart healings. It's emotional healings. It's peace in the mind. Peace. It's all that sort of stuff, okay? Kapoi? How are we doing, Trev? Okay. Could you hold this and then go into Waiata? Okay, I'll, I'll do it three times. And then... <laughs> Holy 
Spirit, welcome. You are welcome here. Let us Holy Spirit speak to us. There's this beautiful presence. You are the God that healeth me. You are the Lord, my healer, Jesus. You took my sin and healed all my disease. You are the Lord, my healer. You are the God that heals me. You are the God that healeth me you are the lord that healeth you are the lord my healer you took my sin and healed my disease you took my sin and healed my disease yes you are the lord my healer you are the lord, my healer you are the lord that he healed it. Get ready for your miracle. Get ready for your miracle. You are. Put your hand on your heart, please. Just put your hand on your heart. If you have a need, if you want the Holy Spirit to touch you, just place your hand on your heart. He's already moving, already moving. Just, the Lord, that he healed Here in your presence. Here in your presence, here in your prayer. Just focus on Jesus, please, Father. He's the giver of every good and perfect gift. Jesus, he's the gift. He's the perfect gift. He's the healer. He's the miracle worker. It's Jesus. It's Jesus. Chains are broken. Captives are set free. Yeah. Captives are set free. Here in your presence, Jesus. We worship you, Jesus, the same yesterday, today, forever. The one who said to the leper, I am willing, be cleansed, be healed. The one who said uh, to the blind man, go wash your eyes and pull a salome. And as he went and washed, he came back seeing the same yesterday, today, forever. Jesus flew. Hallelujah. Mm. Hallelujah. Let's just raise our hands to him. Hallelujah. 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 You worship him. Worship him. Ah, there's no one like you. There's no one like you, Lord. There's no one like you. You are the one. Hallelujah. Lord, you said you're going to open a new well. You're going to open a new well here today. Hallelujah. You are the well, Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Now, some of you are feeling the wind of the Holy Spirit. Physical wind. I'm not talking about imaginary wind or a wind in your, in, your, in your thoughts, but a physical wind is the Holy Spirit. He's breathing upon you. He's breathing a spirit upon you right now. And, and, and there's others, they're smelling that sweet fragrance, the fragrance of the Holy Spirit. It's such a strong, like cinnamon or myrrh or aloes, aloe, aloe, uh, cassia. Uh, the fragrance of the presence of the Holy Spirit is so strong in here. Oh, boy, that's strong. You smell it? Anyone smell it? Just wave. Just wave. Just wave. You're smelling that fragrance? He's here, my friends. He's here, Fano. Hallelujah. There's that fire of his presence. Hallelujah. Now, if you need healing in your body, wherever you're standing, you need a miracle, keep your right hand on, on your heart. Lift your left hand up to heaven right now. Just do that right now. 
in, in the Nile. And I'm going to ask you to do one thing. I'm going to ask you on the count of three just to move forward, to shuffle forward. If you cannot take a step, just move your body forward on the count of three. Why? Because Jesus said, James said, if you draw near to God, he'll draw near to you. This is a symbolic step. You want more of God? Are you, more hungry? Are you hungry for more? Do you need something from him? He's willing to give. And so the act of faith, the step of faith, by faith, it pleases Him. Take that act of faith. As you step forward, you're going to feel the power of God come upon you. The Holy Spirit is going to come upon you. You're going to receive just by the act of faith. Faith is an action. It's not just an attitude. Jesus uh, uh, said to the man with the withered hand, He didn't say you're healed. He said, stretch out your hand. The moment He did that act of faith, the power of God fell on His hand. Uh, Jesus said to the ten lepers, He didn't say you're healed. He said, go show yourself to the priests. And as they did that act of faith, as they were going, the power of God fell. They realized they were healed. He said to the blind man, he didn't say you're healed of your blindness. He said, go wash your eyes in the pool of Siloam. As he went on his way, and as he washed his eyes, his eyes opened. It was the act of faith. Faith is an action. Faith is an action. But this one step is your faith action toward Jesus, the miracle worker on the count of three. Take one step into his presence. Tahi, ruah. Toru, take that step, move forward. Thank you, Jesus. Woo -hoo -hoo -hoo. If, okay, I'm not meaning if you think you're going to be here. You know you just got healed. You knew he just touched you. Just let out a shout. Come on, let's be messy. Just let out a shout. Don't hold it. No, ten lepers got healed. Only one came back and gave a shout out. Just if you know you're healed. I don't care how long it's been, how many. I rebuke cancer. I command it to dissolve. Lord, I rebuke in your name. Arth rheumatoid arthritis, heart disease, blood disease. Blood disease is drying up. That your, your sores, your wounds, those open sores weren't being healed. But they're healing now because that blood infection's drying up right now. That drug infection behind the neck, that lump behind your ear, dissolving now. Lumps dissolve. The body of Christ has got no sickness in heaven. And therefore, we declare the body of Christ. Christ has no sickness on the earth. And every member of your body, Lord, as it is in heaven, thy kingdom come. Your will be done on the earth as it is in heaven. Holy Spirit, come. Release healing. Oh, that heart disease, that heart problem. Uh, uh, sporting injuries. Uh, several people got sporting injuries. Some on your ankles. I uh, want you on the count of three to stand on your toes. Tahi toru. Stand on your toes. And to move, the, and move, your, move those legs. Move those knees. Lift those knees up. Lift. Faith is an action. Come on. Do it, do it, do it. Do it, do what you couldn't do. Quickly, do what you couldn't do. And if you're doing what you couldn't do before you came in here, give God a shout out. Give him a shout out. If you're doing what he couldn't do, come on, let everyone hear it. Let every let God be glorified. Let his name be exalted. Come on, give a shout out. Woo! Fano, there's a well opening here. You don't need a healer to come. It's just about allowing the healer to, to be. To be. And so we're going to lay hands on a few people and shortly. So now pass over to Pastor Free. Kia ora, Fano. So good to be with you. Uh, yeah, I know what you're feeling. It's take home that trembling presence of God. Yeah, don't forget about it. Don't just have a sip. Drink all the way home. Keep drinking. Yeah. God's only begun with some of you. Just keep drinking. Amen. <laughs> Let's give the Lord a clap. Come on. Praise you, Jesus. <laughs> wow, awesome. So guys, Pastor Norman, yes, and, and we've got a prayer team on as well, but they're, they're going to be here to pray for people. We want to release those who have got to go and get children and stuff now. But tonight we're going to have a service that was for our main leaders and it still is. But if you feel that you